over to you, Andy. Fantastic. And I, I am going to spotlight just so that I don't need to do it later on um, because I'm going to be uh, flipping cameras in a while. Um, and if I don't spotlight, you'll, you won't see them. So welcome, everyone. Fantastic to see you all. And um, thanks very much for Barry and, and team for inviting me along. Uh, so today's all about practical storyboarding. So uh, Work Visible, we use storyboarding a lot. We use it individually. We use it with teams and sometimes we use it with really large groups as well. So we just wanted to kind of introduce that and give you some practical kind of hands on ways that you might be able to use it. I would really hope that after this session, um, with a little bit of courage, you'll be able to try it out in the next uh, two or three weeks, at least personally, and maybe in some of the other ways as well. So in a minute, I'm going to do just a little bit of an introductory talk. Whilst I'm doing that, you might want to make sure that you've got something to draw on and something to draw with. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Any kind of paper is good. A4 printer paper, you know, a, a refill pad, something like that is good. And some kind of pen. So I've got these, uh, what are these are like uh, eco-friendly Sharpie alternatives or a fiber tip or even a biro, anything you like. If you have got something with color, then that's fun. You don't have to have that. OK, so um, before we talk about storyboarding, I want to talk a little bit about visual thinking and uh, oops, that was the wrong button. Visual thinking and why in particular kind of why it works. Uh, so let me go over here and you should be able to see my uh, let me just up the, uh, the brightness a bit there. Um, yeah, my, my A3 here. So it's a funny thing that happens with visual thinking when we when we draw and when we set things out spatially that's maybe not obvious but it's actually really powerful so let's say this is me this is maybe not me now this is maybe me in a couple of years time once the hairs receded even further and uh, I'm, I'm thinking about something i've got some stuff going on in, in the old brain there and um if i'm just keeping it there it's you know i can think around things but something magical happens when i kind of get a pen or a pencil out and i start drawing out on paper there's a couple of things about this which, as I say, aren't necessarily obvious, but are quite impactful. So the first thing is um, that the very act of drawing, of moving your hand, is stimulating. And the act of make, putting something down on paper makes it concrete. And there's a couple of effects around that that you know, aren't necessarily widely known. One is that it makes you more deeply connect and think about that subject. So whereas you might just have a fleeting thought, if you draw it down, you take the time to do it, it makes you connect to it more deeply. It's been proven in research, actually. Uh, I think it was University of Waterloo in Canada. They were looking at ways to remember things, and they found if you want to get something into long-term memory, drawing it is the way to do it. It absolutely anchors it in your long-term memory more than anything else. The other thing that it does fairly obviously is it creates something that you can see. And okay. what that does is it, instead of just connecting it to the idea that you have in your head, it sparks connections to other ideas which then feed into what you're thinking. So it creates this positive feedback loop. Loop. In practice, what does that mean? That using visuals to uh, to do things connects you more to what you're doing, and it helps you come up with a bunch of ideas, other ideas around it that you might use actually in whatever you're doing, or it might be something related that gives you an idea for later. Um, what I'll typically find, for example, as I'll show you later on, I, I use uh, storyboards for facilitation guides or for thinking up sessions as i'm doing it is giving me ideas of how to run the session in a way that just wouldn't happen if i was say just creating a bullet list or using a spreadsheet so that's for me individually gives me more ideas connects me more to that idea what about with other people well with other people obviously it creates something that they can see too so instead of having this dialogue that's kind of brain to brain where you know we've got this person over here thinking and somehow by the power of words and osmosis it's kind of trying to figure out what's going on inside this person's skull. When you can see it, you can say, well, actually, you know what, Andy, I saw it more kind of like that. You can have a dialogue about it, and of course, then we can we can redraw it. So you, you create this um, concrete feedback loop between people as well. So the, the net effect is, as well as making more connections for myself to the subject and other ideas, I'm able to refine ideas with someone else. Uh, which really helps alignment and helps us talk about the same thing. And again, it also helps generate uh, better ideas. That's why at Work Visible, we say amplify everything with visual thinking, because you can see how just doing this 
allows you to get more out of whatever you're doing. What situation doesn't need more clarity of thought, more understanding of the subject, more diverse ideas around it, and more alignment with the people that you're working with? So that's kind of our take on why visual thinking works. Let's talk about then storyboards. Where, where does that fit in? Well, and where did they come from? Well, they originated, originated, does anyone know, stick in the chat, does anyone have an idea of where or when storyboards as we know them today first kind of came into, into practice? Pop it in the chat if, you, if you've got an idea. Give you a clue it was to do with animation. Filming, yes, absolutely, Uma. Comics, interestingly, so comics, uh, yes, yeah, so all good answers. Comics kind of came out a little bit earlier in the 1800s as kind of the starting of com comics. In the 1920s in Disney, um, you had people starting to do sketches around how you did, you know, uh, Willie Steamer and things like that. But it was really in the 1930s um, and it was, yeah, there's, there's kind of various views, but they think it was the Three Little Pigs was the first kind of properly storyboarded, um, storyboarded animate, animation, that was a short, but then pretty quickly it went into live action. So we had any guesses as to the first film with a proper storyboard of how it was put together. Here's looking at you, cross government people. That's a rather large clue. <laughs> So live action, it was, so they're all good for animation. Gone with the wind, absolutely, Paul. Uh, prize to you. So yeah, it was gone with the wind. And why would they do these things? Well, ultimately, it's the idea of making sense. Making a film is hugely complex. It's hugely dynamic. There's lots of moving parts. The scenes are all dependent on each other to tell a compelling story. Uh, and they wanted to make it easier to do that over time. I don't know about you, but that sounds kind of like modern work to me. That's a lot of what my work with teams and organizations is like. So originated to do that. And the result of that was that collaborators could then, well, this thing of being able to point at what's happening, to talk, revise, figure out, check, plan, in a way that they never could before. In fact, this before word is really quite important because it allowed us to see, well, how does this thing fit in with that thing and how do we move things around and really connect to it? In fact, it brought the film to life before it was made in a way that really they just couldn't do before. And this is this is my attempt to, uh, here's looking at you, kid. Um, now, whilst for them it brought the film to life, um, my experience is it can bring pretty much anything to life where you're trying to understand events over time. So that could be personally for you, things that are going to happen. It could be with a team. It could be before the things happen or after the things happen. Or it could be with an entire organization where you want to be able to collaborate, talk, revise, check before you make the investment of doing something. OK, so that's enough of me talking. I hope you've managed to get your pen and paper at the ready. I was going to do a warm up that was kind of just a general warm up, but then I thought, no, why don't I do something with you that's specific to what you might use if you're storyboarding? So we are going to have a look at the anatomy of storyboarding. So here's my kind of rough storyboard here. And, you know, I'm sure you're all very familiar, you kind of have a picture in your head. Some people said earlier, um, comics, newspapers. So the, the kind of high level layout anatomy of a storyboard is super simple. You have these frames in which you have scenes that you want to visualize. Um, normally you'll have a title at the top and that will kind of in a word or two kind of encapsulate what's going on in there. And then, you know, if you look online for a storyboarding template, you can get loads and loads of them. Um, underneath those have this space for text and that can be what the person is saying, or it can just be some instructions or some guidance as to what's happening. And even with like no skill at all, just taking that um, that idea and using it in a, in a work context can be really powerful. Um, we used to run a, um, a fortnightly meetup called the Work Visible Workout, and one of the people who came along to that tells the story of how she decided that there was this really heavyweight business case that we're doing. And, you know, the usual thing, you know, massive tome, hundreds of pages, no one really reads all the way through. And she put a simple storyboard at the start of it, and it was literally kind of stick figures, very, very rudimentary drawing with some text underneath. 
And that was put right at the front of the business case. The governance board absolutely loved it and they asked for more of that in future business cases because it was so immediate, made things um, immediately understandable. But in terms of actually drawing, what does it mean? Well, you have boxes, you put stuff in them. Now, as I say, you can download lots of templates. There's a little trick that I use, which you might notice, which is that this paper is actually a marker paper, which is slightly thinner than most paper. And I've got, there's loads, I have a number of these, but the 16 by nine template is the one that I normally use. So I just have a sheet of paper already marked out. And when I'm doing storyboarding, I'll just pop something on top and draw the storyboard over. I like that because I tend to draw the pictures and then draw the borders later. I think it gives a nice, nicer effect. Having this kind of template helps with that. So aside from the layout, what else do we need? Well, we need to be able to put some stuff inside the storyboard. And really kind of for the kind of introduction we're doing today, we're really talking about three types of thing. We need people, we need place or location, and we need props. Um, so let's have a look at how you might draw each of these. So pens at the ready, everyone. The, the, the kind of first and most simple way of drawing people that comes out of the uh, Bicablo method, which is a method that allows kind of anyone to be able to uh, draw and think visually at work, is um, so what we call a UO figure. So it's very simply just an upside down U. And then either if you're doing quick and dirty, just a dash, or you could actually do one there with um, well, head like that. If you have got um, a grey or something like that, you can shadow or you can you can colour them in. And in storyboarding, the idea is it's something it doesn't. It's not about having something refined. It's about being able to communicate. So really, this is as much as you need. And of course, whilst that's very simple, you can. You can play around with them if you need to. You can add arms, you can add legs. So let's say we've got, you know, we've got the start of a story here. And we've got this character um, and um, maybe they're they're seeing something coming over the horizon. So they're pointing off to the right. So I'd encourage you just to, if you haven't already, if you just yeah. draw along. So there's this character. I've lost Andy. Sound. We've lost you, Andy. Andy, you're on mute, I'm afraid. How long have I been on mute? About 10 seconds. Oh, that's good. I thought for a horrifying moment I'd been talking into a black hole since the start. We were listening attentively. All, all I was saying was you need to, there's, there's one other type of figure that's really handy to have, which is the close up. And that's literally, you know, it suffices just to have kind of a round head and something like that. And uh, you can use your emojis. Um, if you are doing that, something that storyboard artists will often do is they will either gray out the foreground or the background to make the main content really pop. So if you're getting really into your storyboarding, you'll probably play around with that. People, what about place then? Well, there's, a, there's a, a couple of things. I mean, very easily, normally you want to put your people in an environment. A very simple way of doing that is just if we draw a box here, is just to put a horizon line in there. There's actually a lot of really cool things that you can do with horizon lines, like creating tension or creating different effects. Um, but we're not gonna go into that here. But let's say we've just got a simple horizon line. The, the trick is if you wanna have people in this picture, you want their heads to kind of be just on the horizon line. And you can basically have people of any size and it will give you this sense of perspective. So let's see, this our character here. Maybe there's someone way back in the distance here, way back here. Maybe there's someone more in the foreground here. And maybe there's someone again here. You can see it creates a sense of things, people existing in space. So that's kind of a, a fun uh, technique. Also, you know, so if we take this person that we've got here on the left, let's put that person in an environment. So they're standing here. I'm going to put a box around them. What are they pointing to? I wonder. Uh, let's say, well, maybe, maybe there's, uh, maybe there's a road coming here. Maybe, maybe there's a there's a, a cowboy coming here. There's his hat uh, from the from the sun um, with some kind of message. Yeah, so. Um, so it doesn't need to be a flat horizon. 
And already that creates a sense of a little story. Right? Other sorts of very simple things you can do for place that are helpful is just using a box as a way of creating a building. So you just draw a box without a bottom, then you can put some kind of ground there. Um, and you all, only need to put a few lines and you can create a building. Or we might say, well, well, you know, we're, I'm telling an adventure story here, so I'm going to do a little bit of a hill and I'm going to do like this. It's going to be a bush at this side. There's going to be some rocks here. And uh, this is a stronghold of some kind. This is where the project team are holed up to actually get the job done without distraction. And there we've got a castle or, you know, our, our um, office building. Again, we would do this kind of thing very regularly. And, you know, you get the idea again, there's a, there's a tree or even we could do a simple house. It's just enough to create a sense of, of place. Sometimes with place also, it might just be enough to put a sign that says kind of we are here, wherever that is. So you can just create a billboard very simply with a rectangle. And then you can have some kind of message that gives an indication of place. All simple ways, I do hope you're, you're copying along that the value is in trying it out. All simple ways to create a sense of space. A bit of shading brings it to life. And then the last one then is props. So props are both things that people hold or use, um, but you know we're not really talking about, you know, let's say this character here has got a spanner. Um, the, the kind of detail in the picture. Normally, if you're doing kind of storyboarding at work, it's more to get a big, some kind of big message across. So, you know, you might be saying, let's say you're talking about um, communications or communication between different teams. You might say, well, we want to draw a phone. So that's just a rectangle with a line and a, a circle. If you want, you can, you can add another bit around there to create a sense of a screen, maybe some lines to give it a sense of reflection. You might be talking about, well, uh, you might be talking about a computer, so we could do a laptop just by doing a rectangle, doing a longer line underneath, and then joining the corners. We do another line going across here, and then we can create the trackpad. Then we just do some lines to create the keyboard. Again, we can add some reflection lines, or maybe um, maybe you're on maybe you're on a Zoom call. I have to say, use this one a lot, or or a Teams call. So there we've got the monitor and you just create some kind of grid in there and you can just use kind of random faces in there to create a sense of what's going on. Sometimes quite often when I do this, will be some kind of speech bubble in there. Maybe people are saying something. You can again, you can just add a keyboard out the front there, maybe a mouse. And um, so very, very simple kind of things. You might choose other things that are maybe more metaphorical. So you might say, well, something's really, you know, something goes wrong in the story that you're in the storyline. So let's do, we'll do a little bomb here. Um, so something's going wrong. That may be the only thing that you see in a frame. Or, you know, it might be about the team working together to set direction. So you just draw a circle, another circle and a couple of triangles, and then you have a compass. Yeah. Or there's some other ones that we might, we might use a lot, which would be, for example, um, a location beacon or a, a globe, something being global or something being on the web. So that's just a circle with two kind of half circles, top and bottom, a cross, and kind of make it a bit like a baseball, uh, sorry, a basketball, and then do those sides. And then you can add stuff onto that as well. So just some simple icons and so on. If you want to get something that isn't here, which obviously most things aren't, um, if you just Google um, whatever you're looking for and icon or look on the Noun project for free icons, um, or there's lots and lots of um, books that have got um, icon um, icon sets, Bicablo does a stack, we've also got the likes of this Bicablo kit where you've got a whole pile of kind of different icons that you can use. Um, so there's loads of resources where you can get these online. You just need something simple. If you're putting some effort into it, copy it. But as I said, even just kind of stick drawings and so on works really well. OK, so um, I'm just going to unpin me for a second. Actually, I'll, 
I'll unpin me. I just like to uh, see one or two brave people hold up their work if you're prepared to. So, uh, ah, here we go. We've got uh, Keith. We've got some fantastic uh, calls going on there. We've got um, Tanya as well. That's looking great. I'm particularly liking the bomb. Um, Vicky, this is uh, the horizon line's looking great and the tall buildings. These are all great. So you're obviously now all very skilled at doing this from just five or ten minutes. Ah, oh, nice one, uh, Stephen. Unsurprisingly, your stuff is fantastic. Good to see you there. Um, I am going to flick back again to um, stick myself on the, the spotlight. And uh, in a minute, we're going to get you to do a, a, a mini storyboard. But first, I want to kind of talk a little bit about personal storyboards and um, how we use them. What kind of things do we use? So we're talking, we're going to talk about personal team and large group storyboards. For personal ones, let's uh, have a look at some examples. So what I'll start with actually facilitation guides. So this is uh, like for this session, let me let me see here we are. So this is this is my planning for this session. And so literally when I was thinking of the session, I sat down, I had my uh, this little template underneath and I thought, well, what I'm going to do first, second, and I used, so there's our anatomy of the storyboard that you've been through. And you can see that when I was doing this, I was thinking, oh, well, I was actually putting in the things that I, was, that I ended up putting in the session. So it's a way of stimulating your thinking about what you're going to do and then going through. So this is kind of an example. This is quite a high-fi one. Lots of my other ones look much rougher and readier than that. You can use it for uh, planning. So, you know, we talked about is this idea of bringing events to life over time. So when do you use storyboards? Well, whenever you've got expectations that something's going to happen and you want to connect to that and uh, think about what needs to happen, then actually storyboarding is just a useful way of thinking. And so we might use it for kind of how we're going to go about something. Just sitting down and doing a rough storyboard is a way of doing something physical whilst thinking something through. I find it really effective. Um, and of course, we can we can use it for mapping your presentations and things like that. So there's lots of personal uses based on that principle of bringing things to life over time. So here's I've got some examples from uh, recent and further back work. So this here was uh, John Cutler, who some of you might know, reached out to me. He was doing a talk at I think it was uh, Product Tank, and um, he wanted me to put some pictures together for slides. So this was us working through, well, what do you want to say? What things might be useful to show? Things like that. But you can see here, this is messy, right? So um, the quality of drawings I've just seen from you all is better than quite a lot of the quality of drawings in this. It doesn't need to be highly, highly refined. Um, this is another one, very rough and ready. So this is like a five minute workshop prep for a client the other week. So whilst this doesn't look necessarily um, <laughs> readable or useful even actually think going through that process of thinking through is really helpful uh, this next one is another one where um i was thinking about now this is what is it's got the the same features although we, we don't necessarily have the the frames in here uh, it was doing some work with a client and what how we're going to go about things what's the sequence of events how is it going to work um, and so I did this to think it through, but then I also shared it with uh, with the client in terms of agreeing how we were going to work and what we were going to do. Um, and then we actually then used it in the delivery as well to track our progress. So you can do these things that have, um, you know, they're useful when you're doing them to think, but then they actually become useful as a communication tool. And then they might become useful when you're doing the work uh, and then they might become reusable so you can use them again. So. So let's make one. So, as I say, I'm keen that um, for yourselves, that some of you at least have a go at using storyboarding in practice over the next um, over the next couple of weeks, let's say. So our storyboard that we're going to make is uh, a storyboard of your experience with storyboarding. So it's a little bit meta. Yeah. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, a very typical um, movie script type journey. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the kind of universal story for the movies is, you know, this is uh, the current situation. Yeah. Status quo. What's going on? And pretty much in any storyboarding that you're doing, uh, unless you're doing 
something that's retrospective, you're going to start with what's happening right now. And then you're looking for, in the movies, in, in plot writing, they call it the inciting incident. Um, that's inciting, not exciting. Oh, it can be exciting. And that's basically something that happens that spurs you into some kind of action. Yeah. Um, so in our scenario, this is going to be an opportunity that's going to come your way over the next week or two, where it might be helpful to do um, visual storyboarding. Uh, and then after that becomes, well, we'll get to that in a minute. There's a, there's a few other cycles. So I want you to start. So if we're going to start off. Each of these uh, each of these pictures we're going to draw is going to take two minutes. You don't have to worry about it being laid out beautifully. Um, but the first thing I want you to do is with the title for this uh, scene is the workshop. Uh, so, um, which is this thing, what we're in right now. So you have got two minutes to draw some kind of visualization of yourself in the workshop learning about storyboarding. So I'm going to do it at the same time. Uh, so let me see. Let's get a timer on the go here. Two minutes. OK, so um, hmm, what could this be? Well, I'm going to maybe do, I'm going to put myself a, a baseline. Now you can copy me or you can come up with your own one. I'm going to do uh, me from the back. So so that's just going to be me from the back. So there's a lot of hair there. There's a couple of years sticking out. And then I've got um, I've got one arm out because I'm I'm doing this drawing at the moment. And um, so there's me and there's the back of the chair there. And uh, then I'm at my desk. So what's at my desk? We've got well, I'm going to put that thing that we had earlier for the for the team's call. So there we go. That's my monitor. Put a grid in there. All of you are there. Then we've got my uh, overhead camera over here at the side. And maybe maybe we've got um, edge of the desk. Maybe we've got you've got a minute left. Um, so then we've got maybe we've got um, one of the cats is annoying me on the desk. Like that as well. OK, so that is. That is my first scene. You might choose to do another one. You might just choose to to do. Um, it would be just as valid to say workshop and do uh, you know have one icon which is maybe the uh, the screen and it's maybe story board something like that. That would also be good. But you want to end up with a title that just says the workshop. If you've got any notes, maybe it's the people place. Prop is what you put underneath. You've got a note under there. All right, that's uh, two minutes. I want someone brave to hold me up something that they've drawn so I can see there's evidence of things actually happening. Well done, Keith. Ah, look at that. Ah, I'm liking the waving going on there. We've got, we got links. Oh, we've got, oh, look at that. Stephen with his light bulb. We've got Tanya also looking very good with the coffee. I want some of that coffee. These are great. Ah, nice one there, Barry, with the with the whole crowd looking at looking at it. Um, Justin with the plant on your desk, very very nice. So that's where you are now. So the next one is, and this is the fun bit for me to see what you come up with, is the inciting incident. So what I want you to think about is what's happening over the next week or two. Yeah. So I'm gonna the title for this frame. I'm gonna put opportunity because that's gonna be an opportunity for you to use um, storyboarding in practice. So let me have a think. So um, what might happen in the next two weeks, it gives you personally the opportunity to storyboard. So for me, I know that next Thursday, next Thursday, I'm gonna draw here a, a, a calendar. Yeah, like this. so next Thursday, I don't know what date next Thursday is, so I'm just gonna put big, big TH. So I have got a workshop. And then I can put the details of this workshop in there. So that is my opportunity to do something. Maybe I've got a, um, a presentation that's coming up. Uh, maybe I've got a team meeting where I want to share the stuff from this storyboard uh, from this session. 
Um, there's all kinds of things. Maybe you've got um, a project that you're working through, you try to figure out. Um, so have a go at coming up with um, an opportunity for you to try out storyboarding, not just as an exercise here, but actually in practice, a way that you can use it in your work. So I talked there for about a minute, so you've got about a minute left. About 30 seconds left. If you have any, uh, if you finish drawing, if you do have any questions, and please just put them in the chat and I'll uh, pick them up as we go through. So we've got you in the workshop with your plants or with your cup of coffee or the various other things that we saw. We've then gone on to the, you've figured out something that's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. It's going to give you an opportunity. So the next thing in our in our kind of uh, standard narrative is invariably what happens next is the struggle. So what do we mean by that? So, you know, we've got this, there's this kind of um, need to do something, something happens, it gives you an opportunity. But then what is it about trying personal storyboarding out in practice that's going to cause you a problem? So for me, it might be, um, you know, you might say, well, how am I going to remember all this stuff? I'm not going to be able to remember that. Um, it might be, well, I don't have the, the tools I would want to use to be able to tell a story. It might be, um, you know, is there, is there any, you know, where can I find stuff that I need? Um, it might be how many, you know, so how many icon, how many, um, Frames should I draw in the story? You might have a whole bunch of questions. So at the moment, we're not really thinking about how you get over those questions, but you're just trying to draw actually what's the problem that you're going to encounter. Maybe it's time. Maybe, maybe you're just going to say, well, it's all very well, but you know, I'm back to back in meetings. Um, I'm a real fan of the law of, uh, the law of two feet in meetings, which is if you're not getting value or contributing value, then you say you're leaving and why? Um, an alternative to that is that you can do some storyboarding in the meeting um, on those bits that are, that are dull, so you can find time in all sorts of places. Um, so yeah, draw the struggle. What is the struggle? How might it be difficult? You've got about 30 seconds left for you to be able to, so you've got this opportunity, you wanna use it in practice. What makes that hard? And, you know, very often with something like this, you are going to be just drawing one icon. Um, so, you know, it could just be a confused icon, one, one single thing. Um, and again, this is where, you know, thinking out loud as you go, you're maybe writing some notes underneath about how it works. OK, so I'm going to stop spotlighting myself again and see what you've come up with. Exit the spotlight. So we should have at least some people who've got them in the workshop, an opportunity and the struggle. OK, so we've got Keith, who's got an opportunity, uh, which is about replicating success, it looks like. And then the struggle is people sleeping. Yeah, uh, we've got uh, Stephen. Let's see what we got here. We've got some very impressive running going on. I'm liking it's that. Design sprint, Andy. Ah, design sprint. Ah, so if you want to talk to me about using drawing and design sprints, it uh, adds superpowers to them. We've got all sorts of good things in here. Tanya again, we've got the workshop, story of the well, the wall, the work, the week. Fantastic. The struggle, too much. So Uma, what's, what's too much? You're on mute, Uma. I'd love to hear what's Sorry, too much. Um, maybe too much. I might take too much time to create one. Um, because these lose value if you don't kind of put it together quickly, right? So that's kind of what I feel is a struggle. Yeah, and so all I would say is experiment. And so time boxing is a good idea as well. Give yourself half an hour. Uh, we've got we've got um, Emily with a wonky pen and uh, question marks. Emily, what's what's your struggle? 
Well, my struggle is that I'm not as good an artist as you. <laughs> so it doesn't come out. Like, and I think my brain doesn't think like that. My brain tends to think in 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 words and and so it's hard for me to come up with those um metaphorical images like you just popped them out so you know what those are those are both really great points and what i'd like to say is that one uh the drawings being terrible um from your perspective um isn't important it's there so and you know for there's a couple of things to say about that one is in personal storyboarding you're doing it for you yeah so so as long as you recognize what it is and it has meaning for you that's great it, it doesn't matter um in terms of um it's difficult to come up with the images well that's kind of the point which is that um it sometimes making those connections is hard but that's really valuable challenging yourself to draw something you're thinking of forces you to think of it in a more general way and that can can generate insights Okay, so we're going to go to the next one after a struggle. Now, let me let me um, spotlight again. Sorry, I should have flipped back to my my face cam then, but it's uh, it's a bit I find it a bit tricky in in Teams. So the next one. So we got our struggle. Of course, then we want to get out of the struggle. So you'll have identified something that's going to get in the way, you know. And so that's taken you kind of if we're looking at emotional arcs. Uh, that's taking you all the way down here and you've kind of got to the bottom, the spiky bit at the bottom and you want to start going up the way. And so you're looking at the solution. So you know what the struggle is for that struggle. What's the thing that is going to help you um, get past that struggle? Um, and again, I'm setting my timer um, and you can you can try and think of something specific. Um, so typically, when you know, if you're looking at uh, storytelling that narrative, you're looking at a couple of things here. You're looking at what I like to call magic weapons, yeah, um, which are practical things that you can use that help you uh, get over the hump, yeah. So you know, we were just talking about, oh, I can't draw so well. Well, maybe finding some free uh, resources online for things that you can just copy, that might help. Yeah. Or uh, time, maybe there's a time boxing thing. So one is magic weapons, and the other is is kind of where you're looking for the, you know, it's kind of the Gandalf the Grey kind of scenario. You're looking for a, some kind of guide. So, you know, that could be in person, it could be somewhere where you're going online. You're looking for someone that can help with this. And so um, in, in the spirit of, you know, I don't think I'm quite Gandalf the Grey, but what I would say is if any of you have a go at this and want some help, then you're absolutely welcome to reach out to me directly, share what you've got or share your puzzle, and I will uh, give you some pointers and, and try and help you out. You can either do that by email or there's, we've got like a private network that does this, this type of thing as well. OK, so try and draw the solution to your struggle. The thing, the one thing that you can do that will make it easier for you to actually storyboard the, the practical thing, the opportunity that you have. Got about 30 seconds left. Okay, so exit the spotlight now there and it would be lovely to see some of your magic weapons let's see what we've got so we've got there uh ah keith has got the magic weapon of practice which is a very very good one and we've got looks like uh, tanya's got time reading and throwing things in the bin trying lots of times that's also great uh, very often when i do storyboards i'll do one and then i'll do it again i might even do it again practice we've got we've got john with uh John, what's your solution? I can't quite read it. Is it listening to Coldplay? <laughs> Explain and demo to others. Great one. And there's a go-to toolkit from Uma as well. So these are all great, great examples. All right. So the last one, um, and I don't think you're getting expert at this. So I think I can flip. I can switch my camera now. Where's my uh, Where's my settings? Device settings. 
I pivo, we can just go back to back back to me. So I think you're experts at this now. So the the last one is the result. So you've got this opportunity, you've used your magic weapons to go get over the challenges, and you've done a personal storyboard of something. Um, so what happens as a result of that? What do you, what's good about it? What have you got out of it? Out of it? Are you just smiling because you've been able to do it? Has it had a material impact on your work? Has it somehow helped the people you've worked with? So I'll give I'll give you um, same same again a couple of minutes, and try and draw uh, the result, the outcome. And again, my experience in doing this type of thing is that it helps me kind of get clear about well, actually, these are the reasons why. Um, and you might say, well, Andy, yeah, but we could just list this all out. And you, you're absolutely right, we could do that. But what I would say is my experience is that just listing it out is far, can be faster, yes, but it tends to give me less out of it. It gets me, um, I've got less of an idea. If I do it with a storyboard, as I say, quite often with a workshop, I've done all the work of figuring out what's in the sessions just by doing a storyboard rather than just doing a quick outline. Similarly, if I'm doing a presentation, I get by doing, trying to do like a scene, storyboard scene of a particular part of the talk, it's helping me figure out what I'm going to say in the talk in a way that just doing a, a talk outline would. So about half a, half a minute left, what, um, what's the result? What's good about having done this storyboard over the next week or two? And for some of you brave people, if you're able to uh, share back by holding up uh, where you've got to, that would be fab. So <laughs> you've learned and engaged, and that's a fantastic uh, picture there, Keith. We've got uh, Tanya, who is suddenly able to lift weights, which is absolutely amazing. There's, uh, oh, oh, Barry's, Barry's been able to uh, create the whole jigsaw, uh, which is rather good. So... Brilliant. Uh, and then we've got, uh, so we had Justin, he was flicked away from, from Emily, who've got more input from the team. Fantastic. And uh, Uma is, uh, has become a creative uh, pen rocket superhero. Brilliant. Does someone want to unmute um, and give, just say a little bit about their experience of doing that? Good or, good or bad, positive or quest, a note or a, or a question? Anyone? I think it, it's just so much fun. I'm a real visual learner and I love, I think there's probably people who maybe don't get as much out of it if they're, they're not that way inclined, but I'm literally in the middle of doing a visual process board at the moment and it's just death by boxes and words. So if they're more excited about just putting some pictures on it, it makes it more interesting. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and you know, as someone else said, it can be quite hard. I find it hard to come up with a picture or a thing, but that's kind of part of the process. We'll have one more. Anyone else got a comment around um, their experience of, of doing that simple storyboard? I find uh, it super useful to, sorry, just to um, validate and rationalize my thoughts about obviously a process or how I want to proceed or what the outcomes, you know, the, the desired outcomes are out. But the fact that yeah, you're putting it down on paper um just really really helps in in actually the story itself that, that's my experience of, of doing things like this fantastic keith and, and justin you were going to share something as well oh thank you yeah i'm gonna say so there's there's a there's a moment where you have an idea and then your head almost kind of like goes no that's not right but actually that's probably the one that you need to sort of like draw down and not second guess it because it's something about when you start when you start drawing that thing, it, that then leads on to other things. It's like I think you mentioned it right at the start. Yeah, it's, what a brilliant point. Don't don't self edit whatever you do. Um, just being able to um, whatever you think, put it down. It might be wrong, but it might make you think of something else. Whereas if you self edit, you never get that opportunity to build on what you've done. So we'll finish we'll finish off with. Um, I'm just going to do some stuff on the flip chart. So that's you know. A simple example of personal storyboarding, and I gave you some examples in there as well of the types of things that you can use it for. I'm pretty much using this every week. Certainly, 
if I'm facilitating a session, if I'm designing a session, if I'm doing some planning, um, or if I'm doing a talk or something like that, pretty much we'll always use uh, storyboards. Um, what about if you're working with a team? So that's just for you, and that's a very kind of low challenge way of starting because it's just for your benefit. No one else is consuming it. Well, there are lots and lots of different ways that you can use storyboarding effectively with teams. I'm just going to talk about a few of those and different ways that you might use those. So um, so if we're talking about team then, um, I mean, a really obvious one um, is quite different from what we've just done is doing storyboarding on endings. You know, so that could be a retro or something like that. Or it could be, you know, at the end of some kind of significant ending, whether it could be um, something large that's been complete or where you got up through a particular phase, or you might even do it on a regular basis. And what I would encourage you is to kind of think of two different variations for this. So the first variation is where you give everyone on the team um, a single panel, or you might you might do one person alternatively, you might do it in pairs. I've done this in pairs a few times and it works really well. Um, and you give them the single panel and the panel has got a title, it's got a space for some writing underneath and it's got the space for the picture. And you give people, you know, five, ten minutes to draw a cut scene from the period that you're doing it for. Yeah, and so by a cut scene, what do I mean? I mean something memorable to them, something that's happened that's got a message associated with it. So you're not trying to do like the whole thing. You're just trying to maybe say, well, you know, this was the moment when for me the sun came out of the clouds. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a moment that has meaning for them. And so you're doing that with the individuals, and of course, uh, then you bring everything together. You put it up on a board, whether that be a physical board or you upload it to a virtual whiteboard like uh, Miro or Mural, uh, and then you can um, facilitate around that and share that as a team, and it's a way of generating insights. So that's one way of doing it. Original storyboards weren't created in this kind of this kind of structure where you have all the boxes laid out. They're actually created as individual pictures that were then posted up. So you're kind of doing that as a team. The other way of doing that is rather than doing it individually, is to get the whole team to map out, you know, so maybe you'll say, well, we're going to do a, a um, you know, a five frame story and you work it through together and you use, what's the title? Where did we start? Someone, you know, comes up with a title with it and you use it as a collaborative exercise. Um, and both tremendous fun. And you, you you know, because people draw things that are, a bit wonky and it's laughable, it's engaging, um, but again, it, it simulates uh, conversation. So, so you know, doing kind of stories, storyboarding on endings, really powerful. Another really powerful story is what I call the, for storyboarding, is what I call the black box story. So the black box story is really, you know, it really um, kind of tips a hat to the point that very much when we are working in an organization and a team and a part of an organization, often we're very concerned with what's going on inside our box. And by that, what do I mean? I mean, it's inside our team or it's inside our department. And there's one rule with the black box story is that you're not allowed to talk about what goes on inside the box. What goes on in here? You're only allowed to storyboard what goes on outside. And so the idea is that you're typically looking, and this is a fantastic um, way of getting a team or a wider group to get aligned on what's important, is typically you want to say probably, you know, anywhere between 10, 15, maybe 20 frames max, an ideal story of how you deliver value. And that's so, you know, um, it's very it's very common to have, for example, you know, in uh, user experience, um, you might have a storyboard that's illustrating someone's journey through using an app. This isn't that. It's a kind of a, a bigger level. How do you deliver value to whether it be a stakeholder, as maybe uh, other departments or groups you collaborate with, or maybe it's a user? What's their experience without talking about anything that's in the box? Really powerful exercise. Involves a bit more organization but the skills are basically the same 
you've got the storyboard with its standard framework, you're drawing some kind of representative picture. And the last kind of team based one that I want to talk about is the beginning story. And, um, you know, this this kind of goes back to this thing of um, amplify anything with um, or everything with visual thinking. So lots of the kind of stop and trade uh, sessions that you have that you'll facilitate, you can add storyboarding or visual thinking to to get a bit more out of them. So, for example, just this week I was doing um, I was doing a pre mortem with storyboarding. And so if anyone's not familiar with a pre mortem, um, you can find the details in um, the game storming book or the game storming website, uh, gamestorming.com. And basically what you do is it's, you know, if it was a project, it would be, you know, RIP project X. And so you're trying to figure out is that you, you take yourself, you imagine yourself at the end of the project, it's gone disastrously wrong. What are all things that have uh, made it go wrong? Now, from a storyboarding point of view, the way we do that is we start with the current situation as usual. Um, we project in our minds ourselves forward to the end of whatever it is we're doing, and we say what went wrong. For each thing we went wrong, you generate, you got it, a story scene. So we end up with, you know, maybe a handful of big things that went sideways. And then how do we use storyboarding to change that? Well, what we want to do is think about how would we stop that happening? There's another scene. So this is what we do. And then this is what happens instead. So instead of this dysfunction, this is what we get. And you just repeat that for each of the, um, each of the, the big things that have gone wrong. Very, very powerful for a team. I did have some examples I'm going to show you, but I see that we're we're at time. So just very quickly outline how we work visibly to do this with really large groups. So so um, we do a thing called Change by Adventure, which is all about reframing where high impact uh, areas of action are in organizations. And one of the things that we do in, in our kind of discovery week for that is we storyboard the organization. So we ask the question of if this organization was a movie, what would the key, key and memorable scenes be? And we work with groups from across the organization to create those key scenes and there's kind of a set process of, uh, of how we do that. And then we assemble it into this massive storyboard for how the organization works. And whenever we do this, a um, couple of things happen. One is it gets everyone engaged and it's very funny because there's a lot of truth that comes out, but it's truth combined with quirky and slightly daft drawings. Um, and there's quite a lot of additional things that we add in there as well. The other thing that happens is we tend, it really, really helps with identifying what are the great things that we're doing and what are the things that are just going sideways? Because these are the things that people will, will uh, dive into for the key scenes. So that, that sort of stuff that you were doing at the team level, level, you can really scale up really very well because you, you're dealing with individual parts that you're bringing together and uh, synthesizing and analyzing. So minutes ago, Sorry, I haven't left a great deal of time for uh, Q&A, &A, folks. But as I, as I say, if you do have any questions, please do um, reach out to me personally, and I'd be more than happy to help if I can. I hope you've enjoyed the session. I'd love to see some of your storyboards uh, that come out over the next week or two, if you're able to make them. Barry. Oh, well, that was fantastic. Thank you, Andy. Um, I've popped a... Uh feedback link in the chat uh, if you if you could feedback is always really really useful you know we kind of lead in that um that was that was absolutely awesome andy and as you said people can contact you how's the best way for people do want to contact you email direct or join the work visible network i can give you the uh, details for that barry to send out post session if that's okay right fantastic uh thank you to everyone for coming along as well um and for those of you who are brave enough to show off your artwork, it's uh, it's a big step. Kudos. Yeah, so thank you to everyone. And we'll uh, see you in four weeks' time. Thank you. Bye. Thanks all. Bye-bye. Look forward to it. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Cheers. Thank you.